let's look at how to extend our search engine to handle phrase queries. So what is a phrase query? A phrase query is a query such as Stanford University where the query is entered in quotes indicating that it's a phrase query. That means the user is explicitly looking for the phrase Stanford University and not just documents containing both words. Here is an example sentence. So how do we handle phrase queries? Note that just because a document contains all the words in the phrase doesn't mean that it's relevant to the query. So if somebody, if a document has the sentence, I went to university at Stanford, this is not a relevant uh, document for the phrase query Stanford University where the words Stanford and university have to appear together. Right here they don't appear together. Now in general, it's been, it's been shown that it's very hard to expect users to change. Right? You can't implement, you can't expect users to change. You have to adopt your system so that it meets the requirements of the users on the web. For law, if, if your domain, if your user base is, uh, say, the set of lawyers, then you can train them and, you know, get them to use your system in a particular way. But if you're building a web search engine, it's very hard to expect users to confirm to complicated rules. But the idea of phrase queries is one of the very few uh, sort of more complex examples of queries that many users have been using. It's estimated that about 10% of the queries submitted to uh, uh, a search engine are phrase queries. And many more, ex and many, uh, more queries are implicit phrase queries where pe people actually uh, don't include the inverted commas around their search terms, but they actually mean a phrase query. So, in order to handle phrase queries, clearly it's not adequate to to work with the index that we've built, we've seen so far, because we're not recording the positions of terms. Whereas here, the positions are all important. If you don't keep track of positions, then even a document containing this kind of a sentence will be considered relevant. So now let's see how to augment our postings lists to, to, to incorporate not only which terms appear in which documents, but also positional information about where those terms appeared in the documents. There are actually two solutions that you can think of for handling phrase queries. One of them is what's called the positional index, where you add information about the positions at which terms appear in documents. That's actually the second solution. Let's first discuss a more simpler solution to handle phrase queries, and it's something called a byword index. A byword index is just an index in which the dictionary, instead of so storing single terms, is going to store pairs of consecutive terms. Right? So, for example, if you look at the text friends, comma, Romans, comma, countrymen, assuming that this is the text of a document, earlier we saw that the, 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 there were three terms generated from this document, friend, Roman, or friends, Romans, and countrymen. In a byword index, there would be two terms, friends, Romans, and Romans, countrymen. So you're picking consecutive pairs of terms and making them entries in your dictionary. Now you can see how to handle phrase queries. They can be immediately uh, answered because a phrase query like Stanford University is going to directly map to a, an entry in the byword index corresponding to that phrase, Stanford University. So the list of documents in that postings list are going to be documents which contained Stanford ex right before the word university. What about longer phrase queries? What if your query wasn't Stanford University, just two terms? What if it was four terms, Stanford University, Palo Alto? Well, this longer query can be broken down into 
a series of phrase queries. Right. So if we have if we have built a byword index, then we can look up all documents which have the word which have the phrase Stanford University. We can look up the documents which have the phrase University Palo, and we can look up the documents which have the phrase Palo Alto, and then we can take the intersection of those three lists. Right. So we can transform this into this particular query on a byword index. Now, what's the problem with this? But there's no problem. It's very likely that uh, a document containing the phrase Stanford University and the phrase University Palo and the phrase Palo Alto will probably contain the phrase Stanford University Palo Alto, but it's not guaranteed. There could be examples of documents theoretically which can contain all these three phrases, but not this this particular four-term phrase. Right, so there can be false positives. Here's a slightly more ex complicated example of uh, building a byword index. It turns out that most of the queries that users type into search engines are nouns. Now, if most of the queries are nouns, there is no need to construct bywords from every pair of consecutive terms. Why not just focus on nouns? Why not just generate bywords for the nouns in the documents instead of every word in the document? Notice that one of the problems with the byword index is that the index size will become huge, right? If you are storing every pair of consecutive terms in the index, that's going to hugely increase the size of your dictionary. So it may make sense in some scenarios to parse the documents and to perf first perform what's called as part of speech tagging. Now, part of speech tagging is something we're not going to discuss in this course. It's usually discussed in a course on natural language processing. But what this uh, what this NLP-based technique, part of speech tagging, does is it marks every word in the document as a noun or you know the other kinds of words, articles, prepositions, and so on. And this can be done with something like 96% accuracy. So what we can do is we can do this first do this part of speech tagging on every document. So we mark every word in the document as either a noun or as something not a noun, articles, prepositions and so on. So we mark the nouns as n and let's say we denote the article words as x. Now instead of indexing every consecutive pair of terms we will index every consecutive pair of nouns in the document, right? ignoring the x terms in the middle. Right? And this may make sense. For example, capital of India. Okay. If, if you have a, a document saying New Delhi is the capital of India, you will index the byword capital India instead of the byword capital of and the byword of India. Because capital and India are nouns. Catcher in the Rye is the name of a novel. Uh, this would be indexed as Catcher and Rye because in and the are not nouns. So you will index these extended bywords. Okay, these are not actual bywords. These are extended because they can have these intermediate x's. But you are going to index this noun and this noun together as an extended byword. So if you process a phrase like catcher in the rye, you are going to index catcher rye in your byword index. And you will do the same thing for the query as well. Again the operations that you perform in the documents have to be exactly repeated on the query. Um, one last thing we'll do, we're almost out of time, so one last thing that we'll do is just look at what are the problems with byword indexes. I've already told you that byword indexes do not guarantee that all documents returned will have the exact phrase if your phrase is a long, if your if your query is a 
long phrase query, if it has four or five terms, then you'll be doing this AND operation on a bunch of by words. And it's not necessary that a document that satisfies the, uh, you know, that long AND query will have all those terms right next to one another. It will have all the by words in the query for sure. But it's not necessary that all those by words have to be, uh, you know, adjacent to one another or overlapping. The other problem which also I mentioned was that the size of your dictionary is going to blow up if, if, if you build a byword index. And remember that the dictionary needs to be stored in mem main memory. So if your dictionary size is going to bro blow up, then it may be infeasible to uh, build a byword index. So what, what actually gets done is that you don't actually use a full-blown byword index, but you build a byword index only for those phrase queries that are very popular on the web. Right? You can mine your query logs in the search engine. You can see that people tend to search a lot for Britney Spears or Michael Jackson or Salman Khan or, you know, look at the popular phrase queries, Stanford University uh, and so on, and build a byword index for those selected popular phrase queries. And what's, what's the advantage of using a byword index for those phrase queries? Well, in, you don't, you, it'll save you the time to do those, uh, uh, to, to, to do the merge operation. Right? If you're searching for Michael Jackson, you'll need to take the postings list for Michael, you'll need to take the postings list for Jackson and then take the intersection. That's going to take a lot of time and if many of your queries are going to be on Michael Jackson, it doesn't make sense to repeat all that work. Rather, you know, just build a byword index and index those popular phrase queries directly into it. So we're going to see how byword indexes can be used for selected phrase queries and for most of your queries you can actually use the second solution called uh, the, uh, you know, where you augment your postings list to store the positions and thus answer your uh, phrase queries. So we'll see that next time. If you have any questions uh, on the material discussed so far, feel free to ask right now. Sir, no questions. Sir, no questions. Uh, they'll be posting the questions. Okay. Yeah, through LMS.